Well, joining us to look at some uh, state matters this morning is uh, Suleiman Yerima. He's the founder and Northern Friends of the South South and a PDP chieftain. Uh, good to have you this morning on Sunrise Daily. Oh, thank you. Uh, first, was they uh, was this about Northern Friends of the South South, and not Northern Friends of Nigeria? <laughs> Actually, the uh, organization came up um, towards the end of um, about just. Uh, time in government. There was a little uh, problem at that particular time and we felt that um, we have to bring the both people together. So that was how we came about that. Well anyway, let's uh, go into some of these issues now. Uh, first, uh, I would like us to start with the state of uh, insecurity in some parts uh, of the country. First, it started from the north and uh, well, let's uh, just take a cue from the northern friends of the south south and gradually we thought it was an all northern affairs just yesterday, uh, we were doing some kind of research looking at the map of Kogi State, and we, we just realized that uh, if care is not taken, it could spill into North Central, which is uh, Kwara State, because they shared uh, borders, and it also can come into some uh, of uh, the, like the South South, which is Edo State, that also shares a boundary with Kogi. But just yesterday, we reported on our News at 10 that some of those people were traced to a place called the Bilo in Edo State, meaning looks like there's all already a spill. How do you explain all of this mix uh, with uh, the aim of finding a solution to the insecurity problem we already have? Are we, are we helpless? We're not helpless. As a matter of fact, um, when the whole mayhem started, we thought probably it was um, something that was going to be nipped in the boot. It started in Borno State during um, the former governor. It's into three phases. The first phase was the local, was the one that was made by the local politicians during Bunu Sheriff. There were talks, we believe, we felt there were talks. The second phase was hijacked by some disgruntled politicians that have lost um, relevance. This final phase we are in, I, we don't know where they're coming from. A uh, couple of a uh, couple of months ago, uh, I did uh, arrange a meeting in my office in the Kui. I invited the um, the NSA to the, uh, the SA to the NSA to the president, and one of the core generals retired, who was in the core intelligence unit. Because as far as I'm concerned, security is not only a government issue. Every Nigerian have to play a vital role. Everybody have to play his own quota. And they came over, we sat down, and uh, we put our heads together. We tried to bring the little thing I knew, and the general brought the little thing he knew while he was in the service of the Nigerian army. And the SA to the NSA jotted most of those things down, and they're working on them. The latest one that has happened in Kogi is uh, pathetic, because... Uh, Government are working seriously, and every Nigerian, all ha has to be on deck to make sure that these things are nipped in the boat. As of today, we have an IG who is on top of the game, who is a core policeman, and he knew his job. He loves his job, and will get to the root of it. Well, the way you painted this whole picture, and uh, you know, for for a moment, everyone will want to blame the security operatives, but you say it is beyond the security operatives. Everyone must. Uh, they're taking trying to fix this uh, uh, problem. What should they be doing for those who are not uh, security uh, operatives? If you live in a location and you've, you, you notice a phony movement or people coming into an area, you notice that kind of movement, you have to report to the authority because if you feel you want to stay back and it doesn't concern you, it concerns you. It concerns everyone. Just uh, like yesterday, uh, it was uh, reported that uh, in circuit of someone threw a bag uh, from a moving motorcycle and uh, someone had to report to the police. If, you, uh, if it wasn't reported, I mean, it would have been a disaster. Something would have gone wrong. But uh, I know in trying to think like uh, those who are not also professionals, at least you, you discuss with those people, you just t told us you had a chat with the SA to the NSA and uh, I'm quite sure some of them should have been trying to uh, fathom how this group uh, is spreading because some of those that were caught yesterday in Kogi State were actually from the state. Uh, 
does it uh, bother you that uh, we're having people being recruited who are not uh, even uh, from the core north? The um, one that happened recently in Kanu, the guy was, uh, from what we had, we didn't get the facts. We have Igbo people, we have Yorubas, we have uh, House of Fulani. And don't forget, Niger northern border are very porous. Borno, for instance, the borders are very wide. So most of these people can come in from Chad, they blend because they speak the same language. You have Kanuri in Chad, you have them in Cameroon. Niger border is there. So it's something that Nigeria have to wake up and try to look into the borders so that they can be able to seal them so that most of these people don't come in. Most of the uh, Nigerians that were involved, there are very few. But we'll get to the root of it. We keep talking about our borders. I remember again, I still would want to go back to China's Forum October last year. And we talked about this and uh, we felt by now something should have been done with the borders, uh, with our borders. As wide as they uh, are presently, some will also say even the Mexican-United States border is still very much uh, a little bit uh, secure than we, we would have expected it to be. Uh, can't we uh, try to do something about it? If we say we share the same culture, sometimes language and even religion, isn't there a way where we can at least have some kind of reduction in man in the borders properly? The government are working on that, and in no time they're going to get to it. Yeah, you, you said the government is working on that, but we see the government repeating the same kind of strategy, like uh, imposing a dawn to dust curfew, uh, cordoning of areas, and uh, aren't they coming up with a, a different strategy to at least make a difference? Nigerians should not forget that terrorism is alien to the Nigerian security system. So, it's just recently that uh, most of them have been undergoing some kind of training in Pakistan and things like that. So we'll get to, they'll get to it. Let me bring you to what you said earlier. Yep. You mentioned three faces in this whole insurgency. Yep. You mentioned the local politicians, the one that lost. And you said the third phase, you have no, you can't place your hands in it. The final phase. Let, let me say, could the final phase be um, unemployed youth, disgruntled Nigerians, uh, frustrated Nigerians, and also religious extremists? It's bigger than that final phase, I can't tell you this is where it's coming from. But most feelers that are coming, we believe there are external hands in it. We believe there are some foreign powers that felt Nigeria is an amazing country that in a couple of years is going to lead probably the world. So they felt something has to be done. Foreign powers? Yes. Well, what would you think their interest would be? We've seen a lot of things that are happening in other countries. There's some bad out of countries. So we have to watch out. Coming to think of it, initially they were hitting churches. Today they're hitting mosques, you know, to try to bring the both religions together, you know, so that uh, they feel, oh, I'm a Christian, oh, this guy's a Muslim, and um, they, you know, I mean, it, we knew what happened, you know. So at the tail end, you notice most Muslims were going to guide churches in Abuja, Kaduna, and what have you, you know. So when we weigh the statement of some top highly placed uh, politicians that uh, seems disgruntled with the outcome of the last elections, uh, w would you want to say that they promise to make the government uh, ungovernable for the, for the present government? Uh, would you say there is a political undertone in this? Uh, I did mention the first, second and the third phase. The second phase was disgruntled politicians whom we all living witnesses, they were on air. They did mention that if they were not given power, they're going to make this country ungovernable. So it has gone beyond what they thought.